machines can't think as people do. The machine is different. Tigers won the series. Um, Mickey Lolich beat Bob Gibson in Game Seven. Uh, Lolich won three games that season, that series, after his teammate Denny McLean had won 31 games in the regular season. Lolich was the World Series hero, um, and he beat Gibson, I think, on two days rest. Uh, the other question was Nolan Ryan came out uh, if if his pitch was at 100.9, 10 feet in front of home plate, which is where they estimated it was measured, then at 50 feet from home plate, it would have been 108.5 by today's measure. But they thought that Johnson might have, if he, he really could be measured in the same way, right? If, he, if, if it wasn't in the flat possibly. Oh yeah, you know, um, and of course there's Dalkowski. Now Dalkowski was, did have his fastball measured once. He pitched one night, the next day, they took him to the Aberdeen uh, Proving Ground, the ordnance, the military base on um, in Maryland, and wanted to clock his pitch. And again, it was on a flat, it was just like on a road. Um, and they gave him, and you know, his problem was he couldn't throw it where he wanted to. They gave him a little target, like this big. And they say it took him 45 minutes until he got one through. So he had thrown like 180 pitches, you know, struck out 18 and walked 22 the night before. Then he wakes up the next morning and you know he had a drinking problem, so, you know, heaven knows how he was feeling. He goes out onto this road, throws for 45 minutes, and when he finally got it in the target, it was 94 miles an hour. So if, uh, and that's again where it crossed, so that would have been about 100 at 50 feet, and then I think you, you ask a oldest Chapman to throw 180 pitches tonight, and then go out tomorrow morning and throw another one. I don't think he'd be throwing any fast. Question in the way back. Is it on? Did you try and get any Cubs pitchers? <laughs> well, Kerry Wood would have been a good one. Um, Kerry Wood, when he came up, was probably throwing about as hard as anybody ever did. And he, I think his fifth game ever, he struck out 20, walked nobody, and gave up only one hit. It was maybe the best game ever pitched. Um, but uh, no, we didn't We didn't uh, do any, any Cubs pitchers. and. And Jake Arrieta hadn't been traded to the Cubs yet when we started, when we were filming, so. But uh, Arietta and Kershaw are two guys who, you know, who are topping out around 94, 95, and still getting everybody out. So, you know, there, there's a lot more than just speed that goes into success. Um, but, uh, you know, it's sure nice to be able to reach back and, and hit 100 if you need it. Yeah, I, I never was a pitcher, but I, I always heard that the way a pitcher was able to maintain their power was through their legs. Did you ask any of them about, like, Nolan Ryan? How did he throw that long without power of the legs? Was it, all, it wasn't all arm. Yeah, it's true. The power um, doesn't come solely from the arm. The, what, what you're doing by pushing off the ground, you're, you're taking all that energy and transferring it through the muscles from your feet up through, you know, kind of travels up through the arm, and your biggest muscles are, you know, through here, uh, your, your thighs and, and your butt, and the, that's where, you see, like Tom Seaver, when we were growing up, was, you know, his thighs were like tree trunks. And Billy Wagner was the same, you know, he was five foot nine and throwing 100 miles an hour for years because it, it, it's, you know, his thighs were, were unbelievable. But there are two things that you really need something in your arm. One is the, the, 
flexibility because this movement here, when you're coming through, when a pitcher is coming through at maximum velocity, this motion here is this joint. It's the fastest any human joint moves in any human activity ever. Like the, the, the hips and knees and ankles running, you know, you saying bolt running the 100 yard dash doesn't move as, as fast as the shoulder moves when delivering a fastball. It peaks at 18,000 RPMs. So uh, your shoulder has to be incredibly flexible. And then your, this ligament here, the, the ulnar collateral ligament, which is the, the one that all the baseball pitchers have to have repaired surgically with the Tommy John surgery, that is actually, it's not when you throw the ball that you get, that you injure it, but it's the deceleration. It's that ligament trying to keep your, this part of your arm, this part of your arm here attached to the rest of your arm is, it's, it's pulling it back. So it's the deceleration of your arm is where the injuries happen. Um, so obviously the harder you're throwing, the faster you're moving your arm, the, the more strain on, on this ligament here. And the, the interesting thing about Nolan Ryan, which I think is in the iTunes extras, when uh, he was 39, I don't, some people here might remember, he pitched against the Mets in the playoffs when the Astros and Mets were playing in 1986, and there was an amazing game where Dwight Goodman and Nolan Ryan, and Goodman was you know, 21, and Nolan Ryan was 39, and they had this amazing game that uh, I think went 1-1 to extra innings, and uh, the Mets ended up winning extra innings, and that was the last game Ryan pitched. And he had had, a, he had, had soreness that season and had been <clears throat> limited to six innings. That was the only game in months that he had gone longer than six innings. And uh, he had this pain, so he went to Dr. James Andrews, who's the you know, the preeminent uh, surgeon who's doing these elbow surgeries, Tommy John surgery. And uh, Dr. Andrews said, no one, I've got bad news, you tore it. We we're gonna have to operate. And at that point, it was a year and a half from surgery before you could even start throwing and rehabbing. And uh, Nolan said, well, you're not operating on me. You know, I'm 39 years old now, I'm gonna be 41 before I can that's ridiculous. I'll just wait and see what happens. And he told me that normally he would start throwing on December 15th in the offseason to get his arm loose. He said, I gave it an extra month that year. And January 15th, I, I went out to throw and it felt fine. And I went to spring training and it was fine. And Dr. Andrews visits every team during spring training. And he said, Nolan, come over here. Let me see you. And he, he, he checked him out. He said, this is like a miracle. It, it healed itself. Like it's, it's like he it did surgery on on itself. Like, All right. Then. And then of course he threw six more or seven more seasons before it popped completely. And then the next year, when he was forty-seven years old, his son was playing at TCU in Dallas, playing baseball. And Nolan went to watch him, uh, and he decided to throw batting practice one day. And, said, my arm felt fine again. I said, dude, you could have come back. <laughs> he said, yeah, I could have. And, and the owner of the Rangers got wind of that I was pitching bad in practice. And he asked me to come back. And Nolan said, I told him, you know, if I could give you 200 innings, I'd come back. But I don't think I could give you more than 180. <laughs> and, you know, today guys are, you know, getting $20 million for 180 good innings. And, he said, I just wouldn't feel right taking your money and only giving you 180 innings. <laughs> and then he told me, you know, don't tell anyone this, but I go out right now and throw. He said, I might not feel good tomorrow, but I'd give you one good day right now. My arm's fine. And he was 66 with me. So he, uh, what, what, whatever he's made up of, <laughs> they ought to bottle that and start, start giving it out. Okay. Down here? Yeah. yeah um, did anybody ever conjecture what would have happened with Colfax if he had gone to modern medicine, how long his career might have gone, what else he might have done? Well, yeah, I mean, people talk about Colfax all the time. Sandy Colfax uh, retired at age 30, I believe, um, with the, the destroyed elbow, basically. Uh, his elbow was wrecked. It was arthritic at age 30, and um, 
he was uh, he would he was cooked. Um, you know, mechanically, at the time, Koufax was thought to have had perfect mechanics, but by today uh, today's science or physiology, kinesiology, kinesthesiology, the, the, the term word I can never say right. Um, he didn't really have perfect mechanics. He came very much over the top, which is extra hard on the elbow. So even if he had uh, had his elbow repaired, um, you know, it's it's hard to imagine he wouldn't have continued to hurt it. Uh, but obviously, he, the the six years he put together uh, before he had to retire, if you could give him only six more. He, you know, his records, he would have had seven no hitters like like Ryan or, you know, and, and many more World Series records which he already had. And yeah, that was, um, you know, that was that was a, a, a different era when you had Sandy Koufax walking away at age thirty, Jim Brown walking away the year before at age twenty nine, and um, you know, the, you know, Sandy Koufax went into the TV announcers booth and made more money than when he was pitching. And Jim Brown went to the movies and made more money than when he was playing football. Obviously today, you can't do anything and make more money than these guys. So um, it would have been amazing to see somebody with, with Koufax's stuff today.